Well, hey gang. We're looking at one of the maps. This is the fifth core map for the Central Front series, which was a series of games came out, uh, I think, uh, started in 80. Uh, maybe a little before that. What does this say? The fifth core was the first title. In 1980 is when it came out. And then that was quickly followed by uh, Half Gap, which is to our left. And then on the right was a BAOR. Uh, and you know, the game was attempting to tackle at a four kilometer per hex brigade sort of level, regimental level for the Soviets. The, the uh, primary functional areas of uh, hypothetical World War III. And this is, is in essence a extended look at the folder gap, right? So we would have, uh, you saw some of the pictures probably from NATO Division Commander and the pictures I put up about the next war and World War Three from GDW. And it's that uh, sort of boiled down operational area that stretches basically from Hanover to Frankfurt over on to the, uh, the, I think the northern side to Nuremberg, uh, Sorry, the southern side uh, to Nuremberg, and I, I've got, got the maps kind of twisted around, so it's a little bit different for me. And I'm, I'm a little uh, looking at it more from the Soviet perspective. Normally, I would look at the maps from this uh, angle, just because that's how the games uh, that I've played have typically kind of worked out in terms of setup. But for setting this up today, uh, or this week, or whatever the case may be, uh, this is the only way I can fit this guy on my table. I'll back it up so you can kind of see. So it's just three maps, right? And there's two more, but different, completely different game system for those uh, those guys, and different units with different counter strengths, so we can't use those two titles. Uh, in fact, if you want to buy them, you can buy them off me for cheap. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is have a look at the game. Uh, I've been posting a little bit on Facebook about how I thought that the <coughs> the writer, uh, not the writer, the designer, Camps or Camps or whatever his name is, uh, where is he? Oh, I'm on the ball today. Look at this, Camps, Charles T. Camps Jr. No less. Uh, really felt like his writing was extremely pro-Soviet victory no matter what the circumstances were going to be, and that really the US was in dire straits. And there was a little conversation going backwards and forwards on Facebook about, hey, hey, yeah, of course, you know, that maybe that was a message that the US wanted to get out, and since these guys had access to non-classified data or and had conversations with uh, US Army folks, that they were just perpetuating that story. Right. <laughs> So let's assume the camps just bought the bait that uh, he believed that the U.S. would uh, suffer and the NATO forces would suffer in a uh, all-out surprise attack by the Soviets. And let's agree that uh, his uh, uh, giving twice as much electronic warfare capability, although at a 16 or 17 percent less effective method, is okay. Uh, and that uh, you know the air the air uh, superiority in this game is actually not too badly out of whack. Uh, chem warfare is fairly effective for three or four turns. Um, the forces kind of get uh, uh, the NATO forces are very hamstrung in these games up until turn three, I think it is, or maybe even turn four, out of a potential ten turns in both the games. So this one only has nine turns for this one, but we're gonna if we play the whole thing, we'll play it all ten turns or twelve because Hoff Gap has twelve turns. Well, that's freaking awesome, isn't it? So there's lots of inconsistencies between these three games. So B A O R has ten turns, so maybe we'll just do it all uh, nine or ten turns. We'll see what happens. Now. What mitigates all of that uh, uh, uneven approach and I think kind of up-armored, up-forced Soviet strength, etc., is the victory conditions. And the victory conditions are, in essence, if you want to get a marginal victory, you've got to get to the 22nd hex row by turn four. All right, uh, all the way down up the maps. That's for the, uh, the Warsaw Pact forces, pretty much. You want to be a substantial victory, you want to get to that second black line on the left there. Uh, this is the uh, fifth core map and there's the, the second black line there in turn six. If you got to there, you would have a substantial victory, which would basically put you at the outskirts, oh, put you well in uh, Frankfurt. So 
that would be a pretty crushing success because you know basically uh, the US really needs to hold Frankfurt so that it can bring additional forces in and stage them in to fight the good fight right uh, so that's a pretty extensive distance to cover in six turns and frankly I mean you would have to have uh, pretty much a, the, the open highway and once again, with these no moved, no movement, and no uh, counter battery support, and no artillery support, and no choppers, maybe that is possible on that particular map. We'll see. Over on the BAOR map, same thing. Here's uh, where turn four you would need to be to be successful, and turn six uh, for a substantial victory would be here, and marginal for turn four is here. So it gives you a little feel for it. Now turn two, these are reinforcements for turn two. There's three divisions there. There are one, two, three, four, five, six divisions here that come on on this southern, uh, it's not southern actually, it's northern, sorry, northern uh, map edge, or they can come in over here, but they have half, sorry, here on this little thing here, uh, they have half movement rate uh, equivalent. Uh, lots of divisions here, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yikes, look at that. Came turn three and four, two and three and four and one and two, there's all more divisions here. Warsaw Pact and a couple of uh, uh, Soviet uh, uh, five, uh, no, four divisions backing that up there. So it's quite a lot to it. Now, it's an interesting system. I really, I really, the reason why we're going through all this and with me whining about the, oh, the balance or how effective uh, the Soviets are, because I don't think the Soviets are as effective as everyone thought they were. And in fact, we know that's not the case. But back in the 80s, they, they were just beginning to realize how potentially ineffective the Soviets were. It was perhaps only the first line divisions that were going to be as powerful as they thought, and the second line stuff was, <clears throat> you know, going to have substantially less effective forces. So I think what we're going to do is, uh, you know, play this game because it has a really interesting system. Uh, everything. Uh, it's kind of this integrated movement and combat system where it's similar to NATO Division Commander and the next war where movement points or operations points are, are going to drive what type of attacks you can do. Uh, there are function, attack combats are a function of movement. And uh, every time you move or conduct any activities, you are going to incur friction points or what I would call really, you know, uh, Oh, thanks for sharing. Uh, loss of cohesion and all that sort of good stuff. So um, each unit has five cohesion points and that's it. And uh, once they, they lose those five co cohesion points, they uh, eliminate it from the board. But you can recover them as you uh, go along if you conduct no activities or whatever the case may be. So we'll, we'll goof around with this for a little bit. I'm about, just about to get started. Uh, the green discs on the board uh, where, where are we looking here? Represents uh, HSK or Static Battalion for uh, that's right, Static Battalion Forces, not HSK. And uh, I couldn't find any rules for BAOR to uh, see where uh, how many they, the Static Battalions were there. So I gave them uh, an amount in between the two, uh, uh, the Fifth Corps and uh, and and um, Half Gap. I just gave them three. Uh, three green tags. These guys get six and these guys get four. So that's not in between, it's less, whatever. See, I'm making shit up as we go along all right, already, right? Uh, and I've got them marked out. They're supposed to be hidden, but they're marked out because I'm playing it solo and uh, if I, even if I write it down, I'll roll my guys through and forget and then we'll have to wind it all back. So it's easier just to keep, have them on the board. I intend to write a minor plan for each of the maps so that we'll kind of drive the Soviet actions and use the Soviet movement doctrine that's uh, incorporated into the game here and that will drive our activity for the Soviets so that there's no uh, re-optimization or anything like that or avoiding these little discs and things we're just going to have our plan and have at it and kind of go for it from there. So that's the story. Can't believe this got to be a 10 minute video about nothing, but it's all set up and ready to rock uh, and all taped together. I've got multiple layers of perspex and plastic and 
these maps are already covered in plastic, so the uh, distortion on a lot of the pictures may be pretty awful. And even the counters are, even the counters are covered in uh, stuff. Uh, see, can you see the sheen on that? It's it's covered in plastic. It's gooby. All right, later, dudes. Talk to you soon.